love and relationships. Online dating is no longer taboo. 74% of singles now say it's how they look for love. The incentive for dating sites to figure out better ways to match up singles is thus enormous. And that's where one site created by a team of self-professed dorky dudes with math degrees has found a way to shine. But is there really a formula for love? Jeremy Hubbard takes a look. This is going to be interesting. You are about to be a voyeur, an eavesdrop, on that excruciatingly awkward ritual known as the first date. Yeah, he is not a serial killer. We will have raised the bar. It's a Friday night, a New York City bar, two young singles eyeballing each other for the very first time. Hi, Ruben, Pam, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, how are you doing? Good, great. Pam is an actress. Ruben here is an ER doctor. They met online. Now comes the hard part, breaking the ice, clumsy conversation and all. I'm a girl, we don't sweat a lot. Okay. Will their online pokes and winks translate to real life love? It is a cringeworthy quest repeated all over the country and around the world. It's fun, it's flirty, it's match.com. 113 million people visit online dating sites every year. It's a $700 million business. No longer creepy or taboo, it's how 74% of singles now look for love. The biggest thing that we've been able to do is to get people talking about online dating. And at the forefront of dating's digital frontier is a little company called OKCupid that has stormed the online romance business. We think that dating should feel more like going to a bar than going to a shrink. With a tiny office and just 18 self-proclaimed dorky dudes running the place, OKCupid has somehow catapulted itself from obscurity to near dominance in the online dating world, boasting more than 7 million users. Right, so here's the preliminary movies for different demographic groups. Their success is in part because their site is free, but it may also have something to do with their unique approach. These aren't your typical matchmakers. They're mathematicians, Harvard educated, and they match people up applying statistical algorithms to their user profiles. We can learn enough about you to make sure that the dates you go on are not going to be disasters. If you like sushi, and everybody else also likes sushi the same amount, well, that's just these things balance out. Using those Ivy League math skills and those anonymous user profiles, they've gone a step further, creating what they call one of the largest, most thorough databases of human interaction ever, uncovering eye-popping trends about dating in general and maybe even society as a whole. For instance, they've learned just how large a role race plays in how we pick our partners. Black people get fewer messages all across the board, and they send the same amount of messages. So they're just as engaged, but the, the world is less engaged with them. And that was, you know, not, not the awesomest thing to find. What does that say, and what's the reaction to that? To I mean, I, I feel like what it says is uh, pretty obvious that, uh, you know, there's definitely a lot of prejudice out there. Some of their other user findings are much more trivial but fascinating. For instance, it turns out men who start their messages with howdy have a 40% better success rate than those who start with hey. And women who show cleavage in their profiles have up to 79% more success than those who don't. And iPhone users have more sex than Android users. We were able to pull out what kind of camera people were using. Also, obviously being a dating site, people tell us a lot about their um, romantic behavior. So we, we kind of did some correlations and came up with that uh, yeah, an iPhone user, I think, has twice as much sex as someone who uses an Android phone. Useless data, perhaps, but it's made the site's dating trends blog one of the hottest destinations on the net. And it's helped make OkCupid the second most popular internet dating destination behind Match.com. OkCupid takes credit for starting a half million relationships every year, like Ryan and Kara. Well, what's that first glance like? Like you've got the picture in your mind already. Yeah. You've seen the JPEG. I was happy. I thought he was hot. I'm like, yeah. She was more beautiful in real life. I was just like, what the hell did I get myself into? <laughs> How am I going to handle this one? So You've already got her. You don't have to win yeah, her. Already. No, I'm serious. <laughs> Others choose the site because of its openness. Some of the other dating websites were not always gay friendly, and OkCupid always has been very uh, gay friendly. And so, honestly, of course, that's that's important too. But there are detractors. OkCupid took some heat earlier this year for being shallow after sending an email congratulating some for being in the top half of OkCupid's most attractive users. 
They came up with that data by again using their math skills and tracking user reactions to profile pictures. The other thing that we do is um, we've experimented with trying to figure out this concept of who's in your league. So if you're a, if you're a three and a half star uh, attractiveness, then maybe you shouldn't be seeing people who are ones or fives. Maybe you should be seeing people who are threes and fours. <laughs> you shouldn't be shopping outside your price range. That's right. You should don't outkick your coverage. And, uh, You'll find no apologies for their approach. They say it's no more or less vapid than picking someone out at a bar based on how hot they are. I love you, baby. And internet dating beats the bar scene any day. If you ask Ryan and Kara, who, by the way, are about to get married, and you guessed it, they once again turn to the internet to fund their nuptials. We actually won a wedding online on the Empire State Building through the Not.com. So on it's Valentine's like, Day. So we met online. We found our wedding online. Yes. <laughs> but what about our first daters, Pam and Ruben? How'd that night end up? We decided to check like back in with them. Talking. How did it go? It went okay. Some bobbles at the beginning, but um, he was smart and funny, and he's kind of cute. So it went all right. Love yeah. connection. I don't know. Um, he asked me out again, and I said yes. So that's pretty good. And Ruben's take? Towards the end of the evening, I did ask her if she wanted to kiss me. Yeah. And uh, she said yes. Sounds like it could, perhaps, be another match made in cyberspace. I'm Jeremy Hubbard for Nightline in New York.